una notte a Napoli con la luna e il mare ho incontrato un angelo che non... Hey, how are you? Yeah, it's uh, Marianne Maisano here. Uh, it's been a long time since we've had the opportunity to chat. Um, yeah, I want to tell you, I was watching uh, a documentary the other night. It was interesting. It was about uh, Italian Americans. And, you know, Maisano, Paisano. Okay, need I say more? So I'm Calabrese and Napolitan. Now, my father uh, was born in Italy. So I guess that makes me a uh, first generation Italian American. And uh, there's dad. And uh, there's me with my, uh, my, I don't know, being rude with my tongue out and... Uh, 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 there are a lot of people out there that really, really like this whole Italian thing. You know, they're actually kind of fascinated with it in a way. Uh, well, and, you know, and, and, and those we kind of call um, wannabe. Italian Americans, you know, like a guy by the name of Smitty, uh, might want to be an Italian American. And there's all stereotypical things that are attached to this. There's, uh, maybe for lack of a better word, we say the good, the bad, and the ugly, okay? Because there are some kind of wannabe Italians that really like that whole kind of, you know, tough guy kind of thing going on, you know? And then there are the very, um, let's say more cultured and refined Italians that really have no use for that. None whatsoever. They don't even get the humor. They've never watched a Soprano episode, and they think it's horrific. Now, I happen to be middle of the road, okay? There's left-wing Italians and right-wing Italians. Um, I'm, uh, I guess I'm an independent. You know, just like you always see Ralph Nader on any ballot all the time. Uh, not that I'm into his politics, trust me, okay? But yeah, so I, I'm in the middle of the road there, okay? And I came from a very strict Italian Catholic home. And mom was just pretty much saying, Marianne, if you do one thing wrong in this photo, there's going to be a big problem here. I was the youngest of four, the baby. And uh, I guess I was surprised or uh, had cramps, not really sure. And I was so happy here because I, I think mom said uh, she was going to make managotte. And, you know, they just spoke so loudly in my house. And at a very young age, I was like, oh, please, you're killing me with my ears here. Unfortunately, my father always wanted a boy, but he got a girl. Uh, however, he did make me do the Rocky Mar Marciano pose, though. Which is a good thing and a bad thing, okay? Because the baby gets away with everything. Hence the term princess for lack of a better term, okay? So uh, there was a lot of that going on in my house. I had this weird thing when I was a kid. Uh, I, I never wanted to fall asleep alone. I was afraid to go to sleep. It would take me forever. So my sisters were delegated. And there's me and my two sisters who were really just not happy at the fact that now I was the baby. The one on the left was really annoyed because she was the middle one. Yeah. To going into the bedroom with me at night and they had to rub my ear. My, just my ear lobe, not the entire ear, just the ear lobe. And I would suck my fingers, not my thumb. I would suck these fingers, like this, right? And I would be laying in the bed, and they were so pissed off because all they wanted to do is go out and play with their friends. But no, the baby had to be put to sleep. So I would lay there and, you know, make like I was sleeping. And as soon as they would stop with the rubbing, my eyes would wake up, okay? As a matter of fact, my middle sister, who I guess probably was a little upset because then she became the middle because she was probably, she was the baby for a very long time. I was actually a bump in the night baby. You know, my, my mother got up to get some water and my father to get, got up and got some supersada. And me, yeah, they met. That's what happened, okay? And then I showed up, okay? Uh, so m my middle sister uh, was actually really annoyed. So for Easter, my mom gets me all dressed up in the little dress with the little Mary Janes and, and you know, the little anklet socks. And she tells my, my sister to take me for a walk. And she did, and she threw me in a puddle of mud. So it was great, because when we got home, she got the beaten, all right? Now, this is how uh, nice and clean I looked before my sister uh, threw me into the, uh, the mud pond. But very strict Italian Catholic in my house. My father would sit Palm Sunday, go to the church, and he'd come back with the palm, and he'd sit there for hours with a cigar, 
a glass of Chianti, and he would make the crosses out of palm. And of course, being it was Catholic school, well, yeah, yeah, I was an angel. Oh, yeah, see the wings? Yeah. These are things we remember, okay? And mom would, would of course, be making, you know, lamb and, you know, or shall we say lamb of God, okay? Uh, so Italian-Americans, you know, uh, kind of get a bum rap sometime because uh, people kind of stigmatize uh, the background and what it exemplifies. And unfortunately, they tie it into every, uh, probably every bad B spaghetti western they've ever seen. And uh, anything that's typically related to some type of uh, organized crime, which is not necessarily the case because, again, there's good, there's bad, and there's ugly. Yes, I did say that in any ethnic background. Just so happens, us Italians, I think we're okay. You know what I'm saying? I think we're good. So you're going to see a little history of some photos, and uh, I'm going to get back at you tomorrow with uh, some more information about Italian Americans. So I want you to have a great night. Enjoy, and uh, buona fortuna. Ciao. Andiamo. Cenda. Femmina, tu sinna malla femmina, chi 